For those that were so upset yesterday when I showed off a thermal camera without actually using it for troubleshooting, chill out. It was an unboxing and demo video, not a troubleshooting video. We're going to use it this time when we troubleshoot a TV. Let's check it out. I was given another one of these troublesome Panasonic TVs with the 8 blink code. So before sending this off to the scrap heap, I figured I'll take a look at this one and just see whether it's something that can be serviced on it. This is kind of a nice little small set. It's only like a 32 inch set. So it's not a huge one. Okay, now we're sitting in the dark. Just turn on the power. And I'm going to hit the power button on the TV and we'll see if anything appears to even blink for a split second before the before it shuts down. So hitting the power button now. And nothing. I'm hitting the right button. There we go. Go! Oh, did you see that? The backlights just blinked momentarily and then the set went into shutdown. So we'll put, turn off the power again, zoom the camera back just so you guys can get another look at it. Power is on, hit the button, there the backlights just blinked momentarily. So the backlights are trying to turn on. We'll turn on some lights here in the studio and uh, we'll take this one apart and see what the problem is see if we can figure out what the problem is we've got a bunch of screws to remove to take the back off I do have the set lying on my mat by the way so the screen's not lying on the bench on this set there are both metal screws and plastic screws depending on what's being screwed into so keep note as to which screws go where these are metal screws here obviously the other ones are plastic screws so I'm just going to remove all the screws here get the back off the set made in Czech Republic so I'll disconnect the power connector Going through the power supply. Now oh, that goes to push down on there. And remove the screws. I wonder if the main processor has gotten so hot that it's broken the uh, BGA bond on it. That was quite often problems. Also grounds. You get ground screws where they ground to the board. Sometimes they, you get a connection problem. I do want to get a look under this heat sink. I don't know if I'm going to spot anything down here, but it can't hurt to lift it and see what's below it. A couple BGA chips here, on the ground. Looks like that's a ground. Another BGA chip here. Put the heat sink on it. But I'm curious as to perhaps we have a BGA failure, a connection failure on here on this board. So maybe some heat with the heat gun. Try to reflow the connections under there. I'll throw some heat on it with my heat gun. And I'll do both of these chips, but I'm more concerned with this one here. That's the most likely culprit is that it overheated and broke a connection. So 
So let me just get, I'm going to put some uh, shielding tape around here so that I don't blow off the other components so that just this one is exposed. We'll throw some flux on the board and I'm going to just try just try reheating this chip just for the hell of it to see whether it does anything. So first let me get my aluminum shielding tape. We'll put some tape around these outside components here just so that the air from the heat gun won't blow the components off because there's a lot of other little parts on here right that'll that'll blow away if uh, if there's heat on there and it melts the solder so let's protect them first so this is the type of of tape that you'd get at a uh, heating and ventilation like air conditioning uh, supplier it's used for sealing up ducts it's very strong it's made out of aluminum and we can just place it over top of the board here this is to protect the components underneath it I'll put four strips on just leaving enough around here so that I can get in here with the uh, with the heat gun and get some and get some flux in there. I'm not really holding out much hope that this is going to do anything. This is just a uh, let's see if it works. And if it works great, I'm not going to hold my breath that it's going to fix it. And I'm certainly not going to buy a new board for this TV if it doesn't fix it. I'll be just loading it in my car and. Uh, taking it up to the recycling center as fast as I can. Try to use the least amount of this stuff as possible because I don't have a lot of it. to say this is just to keep these other components that are in the vicinity from uh, going anywhere when I hit this thing with hot air and I don't have it I don't have a rework station I know someone's gonna suggest I buy one but that's not gonna happen because I don't work on enough of the stuff and I'm not going to be working on any of this stuff If I was making a career of fixing electronics, then I probably would, but uh, I'm not. This is more of a hobby thing right now, just to see whether it will work or not. So I'm going to get some flux and get some flux under the board, under this chip. So that flex will wet underneath the chip, no problem. You can see it being drawn in on all sides. Okay, now comes the uh, the baking process. We're gonna take the heat gun. We're gonna put it on low, and I'm gonna hold it over here for probably a minute or so just to get the chip good and hot. I'm gonna keep the heat gun at an angle. Just want to see the uh, the flux bubbling out on all the sides, and I'll know I've got it hot enough. I could put this on my little board heater too, but.
that's probably hot enough there to melt any solder and re-ball it if it's come loose. We'll let this cool down for several minutes. All right, the board's been cooling now for about two minutes. I'm going to remove the the foil tape. Hopefully, there's no components that are going to lift up with it, because that would be a bad thing. And I wonder if I should just do these other two chips at the same time while I'm at it. the other parts around here. put some flux under these two chips and just heat them up a bit as well just because I'm in here to say this is the one shot attempt to fix this thing if it fixes it great if it doesn't fix it oh well All right, let's put the heat sink back together. Put the heat transfer pads on top. And that could be what goes wrong with it is the heat transfer material gets weak. There's some back here. I don't know what that's for. I guess that's to transfer the heat from this heat sink. It might not hurt to just beef that up a bit. The one under the main chip. Just to make it a little bit heavier. We'll take this other piece that's here. extra piece and just put this extra piece on top here just to give a little more a little more contact area just in case that was the problem was the uh, heat compound the heat shrink compound uh, 
getting a bit weak and uh, causing loss of of the uh, contact area. I'm not really thinking that this is going to work, by the way. I'll be just as shocked as anybody if this TV fires up once I do this, but what the heck, eh? We'll give it a try and see whether, whether it fixes it. All right, let's power this one up and see if anything different has changed on it. Power on. Nope. I got the same nine blink code. I got pop out the speakers. But it goes right to that nine blink code immediately. I'm going to uh, use my thermal camera and we'll see whether I can uh, see any heat. I'll put it in I'll put it in rainbow mode. I'm going to go record on this. I'm going to power the setup and I'm going to see whether anything on this board appears to change temperature in that brief few seconds while it's on. So I've just powered it up. Oh, look, those chips are getting hot right away. That would be this one here. Not real hot, but that uh, inductor is obviously getting warm, as we can see. It's not getting excessively hot, but it certainly is, you can tell, it's producing heat because it's on right away. I have not hit the power button yet. Let's hit the power button. Okay, the power button was just hit, and you can see it was started to heat up before the set shut down. And then if I shut off the power, it should cool down. I mean, the chip is not even warm to the touch. That gives you an idea how sensitive the infrared the camera is. But it's it's seeing infrared heat coming off the board. If I look at it in white hot, when I fire it up, you notice that those chips get warm right away. When I hit the power button. I'll do the same over the power supply board. I'm recording this on the camera here as well, on the phone. So I hit the power button. We'll see if anything jumps out and gets hot on here. Little part down there is warming up a bit, but that's to be on the back side of the board for that matter, because I don't see any parts down there. But uh, nothing really getting hot. For the hell of it, I'm just going to check something. Nine Blink says audio problem. So the audio output chip is right here. I'm going to fire this thing up and just watch what this chip does. Okay, power. Okay, that chip got hot for a second and then cooled off when it shut down. I wonder if that chip is at fault or something in that immediate circuit. If we go back to white hot so we can get the board. Power it up again. in better focus. Okay, the chip is right down here. Power on. Ah, that chip's getting warm for a second. This is the Class D amplifier that's on here. There are capacitors and coils. Here's our capacitors that filter the output. We've got two of them for each channel. Let's just measure and see if either or any of them has a short on it. 
These are little ceramic caps. They should be measured pretty high when we're looking at them. So 2.7 meg, 3 meg, that looks okay. This one here, 2.5 meg over this one here, and oh, 60k ohm. Hmm. I wonder if this cap is developed internal leakage and is shutting it down, or it could be something internal in the chip that shorted. We can remove this cap quickly and see whether the, the set will fire up. We'll leave the speakers unplugged for this, of course. That's why I unplugged the speakers here for, for testing, so that I'm not measuring any load from the speakers. Let's just remove this little cap and see whether the TV will fire up. Okay, I've got the cap removed. Just make sure there's no, there's no short across here. It wouldn't be the first time I've seen little capacitors short on Panasonic TVs, little ceramic caps. I got a plasma that was given to me that had a little ceramic cap that was shorted. Turned out to be extra parts, didn't need it. Still works without that cap, in it, but it was on the A board. Okay, it's still shutting down. Likely the chip. I'm gonna remove the zero ohm resistor that's feeding the power to this IC. It's right here. Okay, so that's a zero ohm resistor. That feeds power to this IC that we saw warming up when I first powered it up. So that will disconnect all power to the audio output IC on this set. If the fault is the audio output IC that's faulty, the TV should fire up. Let's check it out. Okay, apply power. Hit the power button and will it still blink nine times or will the TV turn on? The TV turned on. There's our fault. Our fault is the audio IC on this set. You see? Now obviously if I hook up the speakers we're not going to have any sound but if I connect up my cable I could do a channel search and I should have a picture. We'll do that. We'll just verify that we do have a picture for everything and that the fault on this is just the audio IC. Am I going to replace this audio IC? That's a good question. Most likely not. Because there's other ways to get sound other than through the crappy speakers on the TV. But we know what the fault is. Now if I happen to have a board that has that same chip on it, I certainly could change the chip. But for today, we are going to uh, leave it at this. We know the TV's working at this point. I'm going to uh, connect up a cable. We'll do a, an, a, we'll do a channel scan and just see what we can pick up on this television off the air. In this case, the little infrared uh, camera showed that that chip was heating up. Not hot enough to detect with your finger, but there was enough thermal information or thermal radiation coming off the chip to make that a useful diagnostic tool. The chip that has failed on this set is IC4900, this one right here. This is where the zero ohm resistor is, it goes across there. I've, I've tacked it on on one end just so that it's in place. So that if I ever down the road decide I'm gonna change out that chip, which I say that the chances of me changing out that chip are slim to none. It would not be that difficult to change because it's just a surface mount, it's not a BGA. So this one here would be relatively easy to change, even with a heat gun. I would just put my thermal tape around the sides here to keep other parts from blowing away, heat it up to the point where it was solder was melted, and then just lift the chip off and throw a new one down. So this is not a super difficult chip to change. But then again, because TVs like this typically had pretty crappy sound, um, it would be probably just as easy to run a sound bar with a set like this, right? Because the, the TV speakers are crap anyway. Anyway, besides that point, let's uh, scan some channels in and see what uh, I can pick up. For those of you curious in the part number, D5452A is the part number of the audio amplifier IC. We'll put it on antenna and hit auto program and I'll say search all the channels. I don't think I've got digital 
channels on this cable. I think it's just analog channels coming into the workshop. Some of the cables in the place in the house have got both uh, digital and analog. So there we go. There is only analog channels showing here, but uh, we're we're incomplete. Get out of the menu. Remember how to do this. I to say and uh, apply. There we go. Okay. So. It yeah, looks like that one froze. As you can see, no sound. Obviously, because the uh, the audio amplifier is totally disconnected because it's broken. But I'm going to throw the back on this, and we'll plug this into a soundbar. Should be able to plug the arc off of this into a soundbar. I think the soundbar that my buddy brought me to update the software on has more wrong with it than just the software. Sounds like the amplifier shot in it too. We'll get sound momentarily and then it shuts down. See? This one's got more problems than, uh, <laughs> than just needing its software updated even without anything connected to it. Sounds like the left the left channel uh, uh, audio IC is probably shot on this as well. But what we do know is that the TV works and when I plug it into the audio return channel on the soundbar I heard sound until the soundbar shut down due to a fault with the soundbar. So this one is pretty much done as far as I'm going to do it because for me it's going to be either used as a monitor to monitor my cameras or more than likely it's going to eventually replace the BenQ that's mounted over my bench now just because it's about the right size. I don't need something humongous in the workshop here to use as a monitor for monitoring the camera. For that matter, I could mount it right behind the bench. I could put it right, basically, I got enough room here that I could stick it right up against the wall at the back of the bench and then it would be right in front of me and so I won't have to look up at it. it might distract you guys though. That's the only thing is it might distract you guys. I know some of you get distracted pretty easy because you have to tell me that you get distracted easy about things. Anyway, I'm going to um, sign off on this one now because uh, this TV is, is, is fixed as far as it's going to be fixed. For me, as I say, it's my set, so um, it'll do the job. Cost me nothing. Cost me nothing to fix it. And if I ever do get to the point where I want to fix the speakers in it, well, I just have to order that IC and replace it. But something like this, I think if I really, really needed to have sound off something like this, I don't have the stand for it, so it's got to be mounted. It was, it was one of these people that well, they had it mounted on a wall and they threw away the base. So I don't have a base for it, so it can't really sit up unless I prop it up against something. As I say, it could end up being propped up against the back of my uh, bench and just held in place with some straps across the top and bottom so it won't tip forward that it could end up there because it'll certainly fit or I could mount it on the bracket that the current one if the BenQ that's up there now that's been there for years if it decides to pack it in I've got another one that I can put on that same bracket and mount it on the wall right where the existing one is in either case I only need an HDMI input or, or AV inputs HDMI basically from the camera is all I need to make it work so um, buttons are on what side they're on the they're, I think they're on the right side so I could I could reach it to turn it on no problem um, anyway uh, I'm gonna leave it at this right now I'm gonna leave it at this because this TV is working thanks for watching we'll catch you in the next one bye